In this video, I'm going to show you how to restrict access to certain rows in your database based on access tokens that are granted to users that have signed up for your service. So the first thing we're gonna do is sign up a couple of test users. Now let's go over to here to the authentication tab and I'll just invite myself as a new user. And I'll also invite a second user, oh, superbase.io. And then what I have to do is I have to go to my email and accept the invitation. Now, instead of just clicking the link in the invitation email, I'm going to copy it and paste it in here just to show you what it consists of and how it works. So you'll see that it's a link to my Superbase API, the auth API here. Um, on the verify endpoint and it comes with a token this is an invite token and you'll see at the end type invite so when a user clicks on this link you'll see they get forwarded to localhost 3000 which is taken from here in auth settings if i change this to some other application then it will re redirect to my application and then you'll see that it comes with an access token which i'm going to copy this big long string um, an expiry which should be 60 minutes from when the user accepted a refresh token and the type of link that led us here which was the invite link so if I go now to jwt.io with this access token and paste it in here, you'll see that it is indeed my email address in there um, with an authenticated role. Now an authenticated role in Superbase just means that this is one of your regular users that are signed up and they're authenticated. You'll also see this sub, the subject is the UID of this particular user. So if I go into my SQL editor here and select all from auth.users, you can see the two users here and you'll see that the UID matches the one in the token. So that's great. Now, just like the last video, we're going to create a table called leaderboard. And just like the last video, we're going to have two fields. We're going to have user ID, which is a UID, references auth.users, not null. And we're going to have a score, which will be an int, and it will also not be null. So let's submit this. Great. Now what we're going to say is we only want users to be able to see their own scores on the leaderboard. Now you might think that defeats the purpose of a leaderboard, uh, but this is an example and a deep dive. So I don't care. So let's again, head over to the API docs on the side here, head over to leaderboard and we want the, go on the bash documentation here with our non key. And we wanna see how we write to this table. And just like in the last video, we wanna take this URL and we wanna post some data to it. So let's head here, switch this to post, to the leaderboard. Then we want to add two headers, an API key and an authorization bearer. Now for the API key header, we need to add our anon key, which is the same as in the last video. 
this gets us past the API gateway. But now for the bearer token, we want to use the access token of the user. So let's go back and grab this access token that we used earlier. And we'll send user ID and a score of 200. And I'm just going to grab the user ID for my user ant at superbase.io. Put that in here. The one last thing we need to add is the content type header. And that has to be application JSON. Now we haven't added any restrictions yet, any row level security policies. So anybody should be able to write to this table. So let's test that out. There we go, 201, which means that the data should have been written. Let's select all from leaderboard. There we go, 200. Now let's lock the table for everybody. So click the padlock and we should find now that if this user tries to add a new record, it's forbidden. But we want this user to be able to add records where the user ID is equal to the user ID in the token that they're using to access the API. And this is where we can write our first user-based row level policy. If we head over to authentication and on the leaderboard table, we add policy. And then we actually want our user to be able to do all of these things, select their rows, insert new rows for themselves, update their existing rows and delete their, their entries. So you'll notice if you click this advanced button in the corner, you get a new option all. So we can say allows users to operate on their own records. And you'll see two options here, definition and with check. Now the definition will run before the row is inserted um, and a with check will run after the event. So if you want to make sure that some trigger is fired and some other data is changed in the database, then you can add a with check. But the simple solution here is to just write it in the definition. So our definition is if the auth.uid, now this is the UID that comes through with the token. That's this sub UID here is equal to the user ID that we're trying to insert into the table. Then we'll allow it. Now, if we try and insert some new data, let's say a score of 600 with our user, it should succeed. But if we replace the bearer token with the anon token, for example, then it should fail. Now we see new row violates row level security policy. So we know that the anon key can't insert new rows. But let's try another authenticated user. So for this, we want to generate a new access token for our second user beta at superbase.io because I didn't store the, the last one that we received on the invite. And for this, we can send a magic link. So if I head over to my email now, I'll grab the new link that was sent to me, paste it in a new tab here. You can see that this magic link is very similar to the invite link that we received. The main difference being that this is a magic link token, not an invite token. And the type here is magic link. So when a user clicks, clicks this, it will open in the browser. It should forward to a similar thing, your app address with an access token, which we'll copy. And you'll see at the very end, it'll say type magic link. So this 
type at the end is to let your web app know where this user came from so that you can, for example, if this is an, was an invite link or an email confirmation, then you can show a welcome screen. So we'll take the access token. We'll go here just to show that it has the correct information based at Superbase with a different UID. We'll paste it into our client as the bearer token and we'll try and insert a row for the old user and it should fail. Now you can get real creative with these row level policies. As I showed before, you can have them specific for reads, for inserts, for updates, delete, or you can have a catch all if you wanna use it to be able to do all of these things. And also you don't need to use this UI interface to write your policies. You can also just write them in pure SQL. And just to show you what that would look like, we can go back to the welcome page, look at one of these quick start schemas, for example, the Slack clone. And if we scroll all the way to here, we can see these policies in SQL format. So you would say, create policy, give it a description on a particular table for selecting using, and in this case, we want users of a Slack clone app to be able to read each other's messages. So anyone who is logged in, anyone who is authenticated uh, and has this authenticated role can read the messages in, in the Slack channels. And likewise, the insert below is similar to our demo app here, where only a particular user with a UID can write his or her own messages. And you'll notice that there is no delete policy in this example. The user won't be able to delete his or her own messages. Now, if you look just above this as well, this statement here, alter table, public.messages enable row level security. This is the equivalent of clicking the padlock on the table. So when I toggle this padlock, it actually enables and disables the row level security on a particular table. Now you might wonder where these functions are coming from. Now these are functions that we inject in your Superbase auth schema for you when we provision the database. And I'll show you what they look like in case you want to add more and extend the functionality. So the three that we add are these three. You'll see auth.uid, auth.role, and auth.email. And all it does is when a request comes in with a JWT attached, it looks at a specific claim. So in this case, the sub is this value here. These are all claims down the left. The role we have here, role authenticated. And the latest one we added was email. Now, the cool thing about this email one is if you want to, for example, build some internal application that only people with an at superbase.io email address are able to access, then we can write that as a policy. So let's say that we only want people with an atsubase.io email address to be able to use and interact with this leaderboard table. We can delete this old policy and add a new policy, allow access for atsubase.io. And for the definition, I'm going to get a little bit fancy and use this built-in Postgres function, right? And I'll tell you about this in a second. Let's add in this. Um, superbase, or rather at superbase.io. So what right does is it basically looks at the email address and it takes the rightmost 12 characters, which in this case should be the at superbase.io 
you'll obviously have to adjust this if you want it for a different domain. And the cool thing about these policies is you can stack them up as well. So let's say I want to allow access for people from two different domains. Um, let's say I want anyone with a Gmail address to be able to, to read or write from my service. We can go, let's go all again, allow access for Gmail users. And in the definition, we'll say write auth.email. 10 characters, I think, in at Gmail, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and save that. Now, either of these domains can access the table. And of course, let us know your feedback in this little widget in the corner here. Um, so if you have any thoughts or feelings, areas we can improve, things you like about the site, just pop it in here and we'll try and respond to every message that goes into this feedback widget. Thanks a lot.